Hey guys, Tisha here, and I am back for my final review of the night. Basketball Wives Orlando, season one, episode five. I'm telling y'all now, I think that I'm too old to watch this show because while I'm watching it, I'm finding myself getting so irritated by the way that these ladies are acting that I halfway through typing my notes, I'm like, I don't even feel like writing this. So this could be what some would consider a review, what some would consider commentary. Either way, if there's parts that I have missed out on that you wanna talk about, just let me know down below and I'll be more than happy to talk to you about it. So let's start off with Megan. Megan and Danielle meet up to talk about Mackenzie yet again. I cannot wait for these ladies to really iron things out because at this point I'm over this storyline. Megan feels that both Danielle and Mackenzie need to talk to put everything out there. Now, this would work if both parties were mature about it and actually took time to really fact check each other. But I feel like at this point, both of these women, and I use that term loosely because they're acting like children, are just trying to one up the other. So the conversation that women or people, because uh, women cheat too, have to, to find out what the person that they were with has told the other person, they can't have it because each person is trying to one up the other person. Danielle says one of the things that she wants to talk about is the stalking and harassment and where Mackenzie came from. And when I heard this, I was a bit confused, but I guess she kind of explained what she thought stalking was later down below because I'm like, who is stalking who? If you're the ones talking about DMs and seeing how plain Jane this girl is and she, she has admitted to looking on Mackenzie's page, why is she calling Mackenzie the stalker? So Danielle says at this point, it's hard to leave her ex alone when she still loves him and they are still intimate. I feel that the problem here is that even though she's saying she doesn't want this man, that she wants this man. I don't think she really wanted to leave him. I feel like she thought that she was gonna leave him and he was gonna get his act together, but it seems like that's not the case. Megan reminds us later on about her mom and how she really wasn't there for her and how her grandparents raised us. We know that her boyfriend suggested that if they want to have a family together, that one of the things that he needs from her is for her to work on her family. So she plans on meeting up with her mother, not just for herself, but because of Dre as well. We then later in the episode see her mom and her meet up and it doesn't go well. Her mom arrives and starts talking about, um, you know, the things that have gone on. Megan says that she resents her mother not being there for her, but being there for her brother. Her mother doesn't agree with her. Her mother has a problem with the fact that Megan has used various platforms to talk about the things that her mother did to her. And I feel like her mother was trying to act like she was sorry for certain things, but she was still dismissing Megan's feelings because she immediately like she would say, I'm sorry for this, but you don't do this. So I'm sorry that, you know, I was too young when I had you and I didn't raise you, but you don't call and and you don't help me and you don't even ask how you can help me. Basically, she feels like Megan acts like she's too good for her. As she's saying this, Megan is listening and Megan is crying and she's like, mom, what can we do to make this better? And her mother says, the bottom line is that respect will make this better, that you have to respect me and I have to respect you. And I do, that, do agree that respect will help to a certain extent, but I also feel like they need a third party to come in a professional third party because there's a lot more layers to this than just what is being told. As I'm thinking that they may be getting to some type of common ground, 
her mother then makes a statement basically like when the lights go out and the green screen is on i feel sorry for you because you're going to be in the dark by herself and megan walks out crying i low-key feel like her mother is slightly jealous of her because she keeps on bringing up the platforms that she has rather than the fact that you and your daughter were estranged before these platforms. Because even on the Bad Girls Club, years ago, she was estranged from her mom. We then have Lindsay, who is also married, who I tend to forget about, that's the pregnant one. She's wife who's five months pregnant, but we know her husband, is Devin, is overseas. She talks about how she's glad that Morgan has been there for her, but she wants her um, child's father to be there. So she's talking on the phone with him on FaceTime, saying that she needs him to hurry up and come back home and wants to know what he told the agent. And he's basically like, he hasn't told his agent that he needs to sign late because to him, it's not a priority. And I'm listening to him talk and he seems really nonchalant about it. But later on, he does end up coming into town. We do see them shopping for the baby. And we do see him agreeing that he's gonna try to make sure that he's there for the birth. We then have Mulan, who we see pick up her 17 year old and 13 year old sister. She talks about like, you know, the things that they've gone through and all these other things. And as she's taking them home, she's telling them that, you know, she's, she wants to take them shopping because the clothing that they have is inappropriate and she doesn't want her sisters to feel like they have to show a lot of body. I gotta be honest, this Mulan segment with her sisters, I don't really feel like um, I care. And it's not that I don't want the best for these girls, but Mulan playing mom to her sisters for the summer is not going to help their situation. The girls are acting out because they need structure. They're having issues with their mom because we've heard that the mom is not really emotionally there. They're grieving from the loss of a brother. They need help. And Mulan is trying to offer help, but Mulan can't be the type of help that these young ladies gonna are gonna need. If they suffered to the extent that Mulan did, and Mulan is saying that when she goes back home, that immediately she gets depressed and she's crying and all those other things, the only true solution for them will be to get help and to get out of that environment. We then go to Ashley. We see Ashley meet up with Nikki because Ashley is just coming back from the Special Olympic Games and she feels like she wants to do something to help others. There's a cancer research center above her store. So she thinks that it would be a good idea to collab with Nikki so that they can create um, a wig and donate it um, to the store, to the research center. Um, we find out that Ashley lost her mom in 2019 to cancer and Nikki recently lost her sister to cancer and as they were talking i was like i <laughs> i know that feeling of losing a loved one um all too well cancer really sucks there's so many other levels to ashley that i could like but i feel like because ashley does such a good job of masking her pain and trying to appear to be the strong one that it makes her come off colder than she is she really does seem like there are parts of her that are sweet despite whatever's going on with her and morgan we then get to mackenzie mackenzie and danielle finally meet up and danielle immediately starts talking Danielle lets her know that she's been dealing with Rashad for 10 years. I thought we were told eight, but in this setting, she's saying it's been 10. She said they fell apart because she didn't want to be um, with someone who wasn't willing to be monogamous because he wanted other people. She took off her ring in March is what she tells us in confessionals but Mackenzie started messing with him in February. She says to Mackenzie that it's clear 
that he's been lying to the both of them. And rather than trying to really find out information, Mackenzie disagrees and starts talking about how he made it clear when they started dealing with each other that he was single. I don't see how you can say this without truly knowing when they ended things. And that would have been the perfect opportunity to ask. But I don't think Mackenzie really wanted the answer to that. She said that she knew that they had kids, but she did not know that he was with her. She knew nothing about her. And Danielle is like, how could you not know about me when everybody knew about me? Agents and players and wives and all that other stuff. I don't know anything about that world, so I can't speak to that. But I don't think that she knew about you initially. Maybe she knew about you later down the line when she started checking on you on your Instagram. But I think she very much so thought like what a lot of ladies think that y'all are done. Because these men do a great job of acting like they're done with somebody when they're really not. I should know. I've been there. <laughs> uh... Mackenzie says he's no longer with you. Are you still, you know, in a relationship with him? And Danielle says no. And Mackenzie starts smirking, acting like she won a prize because the girl said that she's no longer in a relationship with him. You, you're smiling because she says she's no longer in a relationship, but she's already told us and you in so many words that she still continued to sleep with him. So what So what does that matter? That means he's cheating on you. Mackenzie says she's not a side chick because he was not in a committed relationship at the time that she met up with him. Danielle then asks her if she's been around her kids and rather than Mackenzie answering the question, she smirks. See, Mackenzie tried it there because if she would have done that with somebody else, they probably would have ended up snatching her by her head. I'm just being real. Because you over there laughing and smiling in that girl's face. I wonder if you would have had that energy had security and the cameras not been there. Danielle says Mackenzie was in the same place where she is now. And she would think that Mackenzie would show her a little bit more grace. That at one point, the time when she went to Tulum, she knows for a fact that Mackenzie saw that they were on that they were together because she was on his page. And Mackenzie denies this. But if you went to go look in and the girl says she was on her page, you saw something. Bottom line is Mackenzie does not care what they were doing. Her point is they weren't in a relationship. Danielle says that they are the same type of woman. She said that you fought to keep yourself um, in Dwayne's life and you fought hard to be with him. So you should understand what I'm going through. I get what Danielle is saying, but the bottom line is Mackenzie really doesn't own Danielle, doesn't owe Danielle anything. Danielle needs to direct all of that anger and frustration and the issues up with her ex. If he continues to lie about it and you say he continues to lie about it, then let it go. Focus on the kids. You're not with him and Mackenzie isn't going to leave him. At least not right now. Danielle says, stay away from my kids. And when she says this, Mackenzie lets us know that she can't wait to call him. They call each other names and she walks out. They could have handled it much better. It's a new day. Mackenzie is having a birthday party for Chanel and Neek and Dwayne aren't there. I wonder what they were doing that they weren't able to make it there because I did see at some point that Neek's bonus mom was there. So for the bonus mom to be there and not Neek, that's a little odd. Um, Mackenzie says that even though co-parenting is going very well this summer, we don't have to do everything together. And her father normally does separate for the kids' birthdays anyway. We see Ashley arrive and Ashley gives her different Barbies for each team that Dwayne played on. That's kind of cute. We see Dwayne's mom there too singing, but they don't they don't label who these people are, which is like, why wouldn't you say who these people are? But whatever. 
Uh, we then see where Lindsay decides to talk about Danielle at this kid's birthday party and to rehash what happened. And it could have went left, but it didn't. Mulan just basically said that she doesn't think that they can come back from being hit, that she was trying to calm things down, not get in the middle of it. And now at this point, she's on a side without wanting to have been on a side. She wanted to stay neutral. That's the end of that. We then have Danielle, Megan, and Morgan, and they meet up at some bar. Danielle talks about how things went with Mackenzie and how the timeline isn't matching and how based on what she says, she's lucky she didn't grab her. And then they talk about Mulan and how Mulan doesn't want to forgive Danielle. And Morgan has decided to say that despite not hearing this information from out of Mulan's mouth, but listening to the lies that uh, Nikki told that Mulan is a flip flop when we know because we saw that Nikki lied about the situation. And for some reason, now it has went from Nick being the one who threw a napkin and who got aggressive to now they're saying that it's Mulan's fault that this fight occurred and not Neek, which is very interesting to me. And part of me feels like, are y'all saying that because you're afraid of Neek and you're not afraid of Mulan? because the two people in my eyes who are to blame were Nikki and Neek. Y'all let me know your thoughts and opinions down below. Please like, please subscribe if you have not already. I'm on the road to 400 subscribers, eventually with the hopes of being at a thousand. And every view, every comment, Every like helps get me in that algorithm. So if you know, you know, until next time.